Okay. Join me for Simple Confident Cooking on Tootsuite.com. Woo! That was good. And YouTube. And YouTube. And YouTube. And YouTube. <laughs> <laughs>Welcome to Simple Confident Cooking. I'm so glad you can join me today. Uh, if you're joining from home, please feel free to... Uh, oh, thank you. And thank you so much for my studio audience for joining us this evening. It's so great to have you here. Um, if you're watching at home, please feel free to uh, video ch chat in so that we can see you. And you can also chat with us and message questions to us as we go. Um, the thing that makes this show really special with cooking is that it's completely interactive. So while we're cooking, you can be asking us questions. And afterwards, feel free to post questions on TootSuite at uh, my Facebook page, which is Facebook backslash be brunch and we're happy to answer anything that you may have to ask us so today is all about fresh tomatoes and like you may have noticed we have um oh i need to introduce my guest i'm sorry <laughs> this is cousin ben he is uh my wonderful sous chef tonight we are doing tomatoes so we're going to be talking about um we're going to be cutting a lot of tomatoes and so he is uh we've we've done a lot of time in the kitchen together so i've roped him into uh, cutting tomatoes with me. <laughs> um, we're gonna, I, when we do the salads, you may have noticed that we didn't do anything with tomatoes. It's because they were not in season yet. And one of the things that I think is really important is getting quality ingredients to start with because your food takes so much better if you have something great that you're starting with. Um, so these ones are from Big Ranch, which is our local farmer here. And we are have a lot of different heirloom varieties that we'll work with. Um, so this is a fully ripe green tomato, and we've got pink tomatoes, orange, yellow, and they all just have slightly different flavors, but they're all kind of tomato-y. <laughs> they're um, not, you can't really pick the wrong one. You can work with any of them. Uh, some of these little smaller ones I like to use, we'll, we'll do a salsa later. I like to use the smaller ones because they have a little bit less uh, juice in them, so they're gonna hold together a little bit better for that. Uh, whereas these big ones are nice and juicy, so they'll work perfectly for our first uh, dish we're gonna work on, which is going to be a pasta. So let's get chopping. So this first one I'm gonna make, this is one of my summer favorites. It is a capellini, and basically all we're gonna do is put tomatoes, salt, basil, and a little bit of feta. And as we put these tomatoes in, all those juices, the salt is going to pull all the juice out of that. And so the longer it sits together, the tomato juice uh, soaks into your noodles and it's going to give it amazing flavor. It's so fresh and bright. And this is one of those things that if you were to uh, do this with a store-bought tomato, you'd probably find that it's kind of bland and uninteresting altogether. But the, the truth is that if you're using a really great um, homegrown or locally bought tomato, then you're going to really get amazing flavor out of that. So I like to cut it in half. Um, if it has a big stem on it like this one does, I always do cut that out. Uh, but some of the tomatoes, if, especially when you have like these little guys here, there's no reason that you need to, it's perfectly edible and there's nothing but the texture that's gonna bother you if you eat it. So I don't mess around with doing that. Um, so a tomato this size, I like to start cutting in half and then I'm going to cut uh, maybe a couple kind of larger slices and then um, you can kind of stack them up and cut it into nice little squares here. And then we'll just throw it in. And let's see here, the, the capellini is kind of, um, sometimes they'll be kind of known as like an angel hair pasta is another way that you might um, hear this, uh, see this pasta at home. It's just a really fine spaghetti. So a spaghetti would work as well, but it's a little bit thicker. And in this case, you really are looking to have that um, thin, thin uh, pasta because it's gonna really absorb all of the moisture from these tomatoes, which is exactly what we're looking for. I'll resituate here for a minute. And so we're going to um, get cooking. So uh, Ben and I, when we graduated from college, we're roommates together, and in college too, we would always get together and cook, especially in the summertime. And um, tomatoes were like one of the things we always waited for. 
Um, we did a lot of uh, salsa parties. That's one of the things we're gonna do t today as well. So I kind of, when they're all perfectly in season and it's really hot outside, I love, I love fresh food. It's just the most amazing thing to do. Um, see, he's already cut a whole bunch. I'm talking so much. I'm way behind him. <laughs> it's great. So I like to use kind of a mix of different colors just because it makes this pasta really, really beautiful. But um, I think you've got quite a few of them there. And the other thing I like to do is use a mixture of basils. If you have just kind of one basil to work with, that works just fine. Um, this one, would you pass me that one? When we did our ingredient show, we kind of talked about this before, but I like to just buy the plant instead of buying the loose basil leaves because for one thing, it stays nice and fresh longer. You don't have to put it in your fridge, but you can plant it and get a couple uses out of it. Even if you have a black thumb and will kill it in the next you know, couple, couple of weeks, at least it'll last you for a little bit, like a couple of um, meals. So for the basically the price of what you would pay to buy a whole, um, container of the basil, you can buy an entire plant and um, have a couple uses out of it, which is kind of awesome. So I'll just um, break a couple of these off. And so that's, uh, here, I'll give you a plant back. <laughs> and um, so we'll just put a little chiffonade of basil. So basically what we're gonna do is, here, I'll give you some basil too. <laughs> okay. uh, we'll do, uh, whoops. We're gonna just kind of cut it into little slices. That's what a chef knot is. And I like to use a variety of basils because they all have different flavors. So if you have them growing in your garden um, and you, they'll grow on your porch really well is um, another way that you can do that. Then you can kind of plant a lot of different things and get really interesting flavor with uh, really simple ingredients. So the thing you might want to do when you're planting herbs on your porch is um, always start with a really big pot because uh, what I've learned in my porch gardening is that uh, they really need a lot of space to grow. And so if you have just kind of a tight little pot, like kind of your standard size, uh, then your plant is never really gonna get beyond this tiny little size. And so well, it's definitely a good investment for that. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do for our chiffonade is we're going to just kind of, I kind of ball it up a little bit so you have kind of a solid um, bit to work with and just do fine little slices like that. Yeah, that's exactly it. And okay, so I do, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so we can dump that in here and we'll dump your tomatoes in here too. And these tomatoes are so big that we actually don't even need that many of them in here. So we want to do kind of like as thin of slices as we can because if they're, they're too big, then it's kind of um, a little bit less pleasant when you're biting into it. <laughs> but um, for first attempt, I say it's fantastic. <laughs> um, so then we're going to do the salt. So this is going to be a really big component in um, pulling out all the water in the, your tomatoes. And we'll toss yours in here too. Thank you. And I just, I love having a good, a lot to work with here. So they're so bright and colorful. So you can just get in here with your hands. Um, I have to keep going, so I'm gonna <laughs> use these to toss it up real quick. And you just wanna make sure that your noodles get uh, really well incorporated in here. And then um, we'll probably, I'll wait to serve this at, at the end because I do like to move it into a different clean bowl just because it'll look prettier that way. But we can, for now, just set this aside and um, we'll finish it in just a little bit. So we're on to number two, which is going to be our bruschetta. Can I ask you a quick yes, please do. For people who are on a low salt diet, that was probably just about two teaspoons of salt. That would be, well, okay, so in this case, um, we're gonna actually finish it with some feta. This is one of my favorite ones. You can get it at Trader Joe's. It's an Israeli feta and it's a sheep feta too. So it has amazing flavor, really soft texture, and it's gonna add salt as well to this dish. So I err on the side of under salting it. Um, for this much pasta, I would probably put in at least a teaspoon, um, but this is gonna give you some salt as well. If you salted the water for the pasta, that's gonna give you some salt as well. So you wanna make sure to taste it as you go. The most important thing is to just keep tasting for the level of salt that you want. 
Um, but also the longer you just let it set here, if you want it to be a little bit light on the salt, um, the longer you let it sit, the more it's gonna draw out the water, period. But the salt's gonna definitely help with that too. But if why, you wanna go a little lighter, you why, can. Why are we waiting on the feta? Oh, water? cause I'm gonna dump it in here at the end, make if it beautiful. You it earlier on. You could, present? I just don't like it to get soggy and it'll turn okay. red. <laughs> so it just looks prettier. Really, you're, if you're just doing it this at home, absolutely. Just put it in now if you want to. And you can pretty much be done right now. Since we have some time, we're gonna just let it sit there for a little bit. Just let it hang out. Okay, so we're gonna do some more tomatoes for um, bruschetta now. And I like to use the little cherries because they're um, gonna be not as juicy for this. Um, certainly, like the, these smaller tomatoes work really great as well. But um, for this, I kind of don't want to use the juicy ones unless I was using like a bigger piece of bread, maybe that's a little bit softer or a larger piece of like um, ciabatta or something like this. Then maybe you do want to have all that really great juice. Um, ben lived in Spain for a while and I don't tell him what your favorite thing is oh, <laughs> with so the I, bread. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a, it's a fresh garlic and tomato rubbed into the bread. It's with a little olive oil and salt. It's delicious. Mm. It's very he was um, telling me about this and they cut like the garlic in half and they it works especially well when you have a really crusty bread to scrub it on there because it'll kind of these rough edges will kind of really pull out that garlic and put the flavor on and then they rub it with the tomato as well yep. so that's a great way to do this too, get the flavors going so okay so these ones we'll just kind of cut in half and then we'll cut them maybe into like force but like a little half is a little half will do the trick just fine and um, let's see, these ones take a little bit longer, but I don't know. I like the color, I like the flavor of them, so they're kind of fun to do. We did these um, crostinis at home before I got here. So basically all I have here is a French baguette. So we just sliced it and um, kind of toast one side. I put them all out on a cookie sheet and we just toast one layer in the oven. And then when they just get to be like just slightly golden brown around the outside, we flip them over and toast them a little longer. And I like to finish them with a little bit of butter or olive oil. Um, just gives it nice flavor. Any questions over there? You guys doing good? <laughs> and let's see here. How, how are your tomatoes doing there? So the other thing we're gonna add in here is gonna be again some basil and um, olive oil. We're gonna also do some garlic in this one. Yeah. About how many tomatoes do you? Um, we would probably, one? we're just gonna do a couple. Uh, you've got a good stack going there. But I'd say for this many, we're gonna wanna do about maybe a half a cup to a cup total okay. is all we really need for this. So this basil here is actually a lemon basil. It's really interesting to taste. It has a fragrant, a really neat fragrance to it. But so basil, but also it just has the lightest bit of citrus to it as well. So it's kind of a fun one. I like for this. Sometimes I even do a little bit of lemon zest when I'm um, making a bruschetta. So bruschetta is actually the name of this item here. The crust crostini is what we call it a lot of times. But um, bruschetta could be pretty much anything you put on top of it. Just in America, we tend to call it bruschetta, meaning the tomato version of it. But a lot of times they can do it with um, meats or beans or a lot of different things that they'll put on top of it. So how's your, your collection? You're cutting a lot faster. <laughs> How do you just talk away? <laughs> so who's joining us at home today? Do we have anybody that's brave to be on camera? <laughs> And we, have, uh, we do have a really special visitor today. Besides my cousin, I have my niece visiting me from Seattle. So I'm really excited to have her here. Yeah. This is my little chef here. Yeah. Yeah. They just got home from Hawaii. So uh, my birthday is this week. So this is my birthday present right here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sugar. <laughs> Okay, I think we've got enough to work with here. Yep. Let's give it, so now we'll just give these ones here, I'll add them in here, thank you very much. <laughs> and what we'll do is we'll give them, um, so this is a basil olive oil, we use this on the salad course too, um, that uh, they actually, this is from St. Helena Olive Oil Company, and this company actually presses fresh herbs with the olive oil, so it's really cool because um, most flavored oils is literally flavored with 
kind of an infusion or a, an extract that they add to it. This one, they actually use a fresh herb, so it tastes really bright like basil, so I love it. For this, you can kind of use it in place of olive oil because it just kind of adds right to it. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so we'll just do a little bit of salt and then... Do uh, you have garlic for this? I do, yeah. Let's um, do a couple garlic cloves. Maybe, um, maybe one or two, depending on how bold you are. We're, we like garlic, our family, so we, we tend to do, do quite a bit of it. But I like to just squish it with the side of my knife, and um, that way it just kind of breaks it up. It's really easy that way to um, kind of get, get the clove out. So I don't, I don't usually like to mess around with the little tools that, I don't know, I feel like it just causes more, more headaches and more dishes. And it's easy to cut it, but I have a garlic press, which I like to use, so just stick it right in there. And if you're wanting to, this would be a, a good point that you could just, um, instead of doing it or in addition to doing that, um, you can take your crostini and you can kind of just rub it right onto here and then you get all that amazing flavor directly on here. And in fact, you can do the same thing with like your tomato and rub this on here too. And then um, that would be a little bit more Spanish style to start with, yeah? Yep. Kind of in there. <laughs> exactly. So um, we'll just give this a really light toss here and um, you can just keep it very simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. Taste it for salt. Make sure we got enough saltiness, enough garlic in there. Yep. You don't have to say that to be nice. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay, good. So then these ones, what we're gonna do is just put um, a little bit on top. Um, these little, I like just to do a small enough size piece that you're gonna um, be, be easy to put it in your mouth. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we'll finish it here. I'll let you do this part. So Parmesan cheese. And I like to do a cheese grater. Okay. So what you're gonna do is just grate off a little bit and then I'll just kind of make a little wing of cheese on top. Yeah, that's perfect. Excellent. More cheese. More cheese, more cheese. <laughs> That's perfect, okay, yep. that'll do. So, um, okay, there we go, that one is good for now. And you can see like there's a lot of juice coming in here, don't worry, we're gonna use that. We'll put that back here for now. And now we will we'll move on to, on to the next. So for now, we'll, uh, do you wanna try one? <laughs> you can Talking go. into it. Hmm? Go feed the people. <laughs> so the next thing, this is our, um, everyone always, always has to be invited to our salsa parties because this is like, this is our thing in college where you're kind of poor, it's hot out, really hot, and you just kind of nothing sounds good except for something kind of really fresh. And we make all kinds of different salsas and ceviches. In fact, I was going to do a ceviche today, except for that um, Susan said that we should do a fish one, which sounded even better. So ceviche is gonna have to wait for another day. But it is remarkably similar to a fresh salsa, which we're gonna do here. Um, so, ready to cut more tomatoes? <laughs> so we're gonna do, um, I'm gonna start with a white onion today. I love to use kind of a sweet onion. Um, this recently, just this last, um, last month, my husband and I went up to Walla Walla, which is where I um, spent high school and college, and they're of course famous for Walla Walla sweet onions, which is a, a really, really mild kind of a yellow onion, similar to a Maui or um, kind of similar to a Maui onion and um, just have this really neat sweetness. It's one of my favorite ones to use in a salsa just because it's um, not quite as abrasive as, um, as some onions can be. But this uh, white onion will be nice and mild. It'll work great too. So we're gonna cut um, kind of into a smaller, um, kind of a small dice there. And um, with the jalapenos, uh, depending on how spicy you like it, uh, one of the tricks that I like these guys back over here is um, you can cut down along the edge so you have this really clean cut here 
and you can see like all the seeds remain inside. So that way, if you kind of uh, want the flavor of the jalapeno, um, most of the heat, the hottest part of the heat, I should say, is in the stem and it's in the seeds. So this is a really great way to get that flavor without maybe too much heat. Ben is one of the people that likes to put habaneros and pretty much all the hotter, the hotter, the hotter better. <laughs> so when we do a salsa night, we have to have pretty much every, every different um, combination of mild, medium, hot, crazy hot. Otherwise you can't. Blow your socks off hot. <laughs> yeah. What was the one you did the other day that was so hot? I had a ghost chilies. Ghost chilies. Those are yeah. delicious. He's hardcore. And it, and I start crying just <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> and then I get it all to myself, which is also a plus. You know, so when you have it like to. really hot, then how do you how do you like to tone it down? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I like to just volumize it because if yeah, you keep adding more tomatoes, you keep yeah. adding more of your other ingredients, the more you can kind of, uh, same thing if you get it over salted or something, the more you add and you can kind of um, thin it out a little bit, then you get a little bit better. Kind of chill it out a little bit. <laughs> okay, so I'm doing, this is a pretty big jalapeno, so I'm doing about half a jalapeno, I guess, today. And um, how many tomatoes? We'll do, I'd say like, Four, four tomatoes, four or five okay. tomatoes. And I do, um, this time what I'm doing is kind of half seeds. So I'm using part of the seeds and I'm kind of leaving some of the seeds in here too. So we get kind of, I like to start on the mild side. You can always put jalapenos or a hot sauce on the side for people who are bold and daring and like to have a lot spicier. Um, and we'll do, I like a lot of fresh cilantro. This one I got from the farmer's market, um, from the farm stand, um, Big Ranch here in Napa. And um, what I like is they keep the stems on it too, so you can actually leave it in a water glass or something until you're ready to use it, and helps it keep really fresh and nice. Um, living in California, cilantro is one of those things that's pretty easy to find <laughs> just about anywhere. And, you know. Sometimes you get bits of other garden garden bits that grew up with it. <laughs> that's just part of it. Just pull them out. They're not going to hurt so, anybody. Anna, on the cilantro, yes. you don't worry about pulling each leaf off. I don't at and all. And that is brilliant, and I'm going to start doing that. That's I don't at all, and here's why. Um, this is especially in um, a cilantro, and also in basil. They have incredible flavor in the stem, and the only thing that's kind of unpleasant is when you're eating like a big chunk of stem. That's what you don't want because nobody kind of wants to nibble on that. Some of your herbs like um, that have a firm stem like a rosemary or a thyme or um, oregano, anything that has a real woody stem, then absolutely you're going to want to pull off the, um, the leaves. Um, and when you see me make cook, like stocks and um, soups, I use a spice ball a lot because I'm way too lazy for that kind of business. So I just throw all of it into a, like a spice ball or in a cheesecloth you can tie it into. And then, again, you don't have to take off the stems. You can just leave the flavor there and then pull it out when you're done. And then you have a clean broth without that unpleasant texture. Um, these are sort of things when you buy it at the farm stand that come in here. It's just a friendly little weed and it's... Um, actually edible it's a little bit kind of like a watercress so it's not going to kill anybody but it's not cilantro so you can get rid of it if you feel so inclined uh you can dump those in here so anna then, what's yes. the difference between italian parsley and cilantro you'll see them both in the store completely different and um my husband especially could take some notes because i asked him to pick one up for me and i got the other one the other day <laughs> So smell it for one thing. Please smell it. <laughs> and I love you, and I love you for picking up groceries for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so a uh, cilantro, I wish I had a flat leaf parsley on here to show you, but cilantro, um, flat leaf, leaf, leaf parsley is the same as Ital uh, Italian kind of leafy parsley. It's the same thing. It has slightly different flavors, and I prefer it. It has a stronger parsley flavor. <laughs> I'm going to be in the doghouse, my husband's, sorry baby, but I love you. It's all green, it's all green. 
<laughs> but yes, they're different. I know. Simple, com confident husbanding. <laughs> so, um, your um, cilantro is going to have a, a really soft leaf texture, and it's also um, quite lacy around it. And a flat leaf parsley is a little bit, um, it doesn't have, I, um, it's going to be a little bit firmer of a texture and also a little bit pointier on the edges instead of kind of these lacy edges. And but if you can. Also, <laughs> also there's a sign that says flat leaf parsley. It's Italian parsley or it says cilantro. So in James' Unless defense. Unless you're at the market to his, his, to his credit. In James' defense at the market, they'll tell you it's the same thing. Yeah. In the market, the clerks will send you to the Italian parsley. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You have to know what you're looking for. But I love Italian parsley equally, so always glad to have it. Okay, so we've got um, cilantro tomatoes? in here. Would you like more tomatoes? Sure, that's plenty of tomatoes. That'll work. And then let's do some lime. Okay, the trick with lime. This is going to be news, I'm sure. <laughs> I, I'm full of great suggestions, just you wait. Um, okay, so lime, when you buy a lime, you probably look for the brightest, beautiful green limes that you've ever seen, right? Wrong. <laughs> they are, like uh, most things you buy in the supermarket, going to be green and not ripe. And so every picture you've ever seen of a lime is beautiful, bright green. Actually, the more yellow you can get, the sweeter they're going to be and the juicier they're going to be. So always feel your limes and make sure that you can actually squish them. That'll tell you that there's juice inside for sure. <laughs> and, um, and always look for these little yellow bits. If you can find that, then there's a really good chance that your lime is going to have much better flavor and be much juicier. And um, then, there you go. So then we'll put... Let's do about a lime and a half in here. It right. depends on how um, how limey you like it, how acidic. If you don't have lime, lemon works just fine for this. Um, it's still a um, citrus, so that'll do just fine. But I tend to not do like orange or something because it's sweet. So unless that's specifically what you're going for, you generally want to stick to something lime or lemon. Lime is traditional, so we'll go with that. And we will. Um, Get a spoon, give this a good stir, and hmm, I have chips down there. I forgot to grab them out though. Should we give it a try and see how it goes? Yes! Oh, yes! Ta da! Here we go. So, this is a um, what you call a pico de gallo. Uh, sometimes I like to add fresh corn in here or cucumber for a little bit of crunch. Um, basically, when I'm cooking at home, I use pretty much whatever I have around. Um, sometimes I add garlic, sometimes I don't. I kind of find it to be a personal preference. After you. Okay. I like these ones. These are homemade chips. If you have like, ta-da, if you um, have a Mexican restaurant nearby, you can probably ask them and they'll send you home with a nice bag of them. But here, give it a shot. See what you think. What do we need in here? Salt. salt. You forgot salt. Yep. Okay, salt, and then we're pretty good, right? I think so. Okay, good. Yep. Mm, that's delicious. Thank you. I think so too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thanks for keeping it humble. I know, right? <laughs> okay, so let's. Um, so again, what I would do with oops, making a mess here. What I would do here is um, probably pour it into a different bowl for serving just so that you have um, something a little cleaner to work with and um, make quite as much as we would have made before. But, um, but this way you have, thank you, <laughs> uh, kind of a nice clean bowl to serve it in and then it's going to look a little bit prettier for your guests. Okay, ready for the next? Yep. All right, we are now doing... Um, gazpacho. So let's get reorganized real quick and maybe let's put it right here in the middle. I think that'll be a good place for it. So I do this um, usually in a blender at home, but I have this beautiful cuisinart that I love. So we're going to use that today. Gazpacho is so easy to make and it's so delicious, 
so we're gonna give it a, give it a good college try. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're gonna add in a couple of tomatoes. Um, probably all we need is just um, two or three. Okay. You can cut pretty big, oh, we'll use these ones I already cut before. You can have pretty big chunks here. And um, even, even pretty big sized ones. And then a cucumber, I like to use, this is, um, we had a debate about this this morning, but Armenian cucumber, and I think this is a Persian cucumber. We had a debate about the actual names of them, so we might be a little bit off. But I like them because the skins are quite thin, and you rarely, with these varietals, you're rarely gonna get the bitterness that you get a lot of times in a pickling cucumber or a regular burpee cucumber. Plus it has that really thin skin, and if you buy it at the market, it's crazy waxy and kind of nasty personally. <laughs> so this one is what I'm going to go through today. So we've got about three tomatoes in there, good sized tomatoes. And we're going to just chop off the ends. The skin is perfectly delicious. So we'll just cut that into a couple big pieces. That's Toss that in. This is a, well. yes, this okay. is a torpedo onion. So it's just a kind of an heirloom varietal of a red onion. So um, some more flavor, a little bit different. If you pass me that bell pepper, I'll put a little bit of this in. Thank you. So um, again, I like to slice the peppers. I like to go down the side instead of straight through the middle because that way you're gonna um, be able to kind of avoid most of the seeds and just get the delicious parts. And let's see, what else are we gonna put in here? A Little bit of vinegar and a little bit of salt. Um, the other thing that I usually put in here, you know, we'll, we'll keep it keep it simple but usually what you traditionally will put in here is uh, stale bread which I left on the counter at home so that's um I might put a little cr couple croutons in here instead so we got a couple extra croutons so it just doesn't matter especially because your whole point of putting it in there is having um, a stale bread which essentially a crouton would be fresh stale bread <laughs> and um the the reason you're putting it in there is because those um the, the um, bread is what's kind of thickening it a little bit. I think you could do it with any kind of bread. Uh, I do. I use, I my best gazpacho ever was for supper club. When you, I think, I think so, right? That's right. That was pretty good. I think that was my best Yeah, one I was going to say, I don't know if you remember, but do you remember what you put in that made it, and it was the best gazpacho I ever had. Do you okay, remember what say it was? What it was. I, I it was do. garlic bread. Mm. Yeah, it was leftover garlic you put, bread. You, met, you had from, some leftover garlic bread yeah. and you put it in and it was amazing. I forgot it the bread so and we had, um, we brought like a like garlic bread or something with Parmesan and butter and everything. We're like, what the heck, we'll put it in here. That's as good a place as any for it to end up. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good tip. You guys should try it. It's yeah. pretty delicious. Yeah, that was pretty good. So we're going to put olive oil in. So I would use maybe about... Um, a good tablespoon, I'd say. We like to finish with a little bit of it. And then uh, we got some salt in there and a little splash of vinegar, I say. The other thing I like to put in is a um, splash of Worcestershire. Worcestershire? Getting better at this. Worcestershire. 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 Um, so this one I would do maybe more like a teaspoon. Just enough, and then um, it says a little bit of anchovy in it. It has a little bit of an earthiness, a little bit of salt. So I just kind of like like what it contributes there. <laughs> and let's give it a spin. Where's my lid? This is a good time for questions from the audience. Yes. I'm going to turn your mic down. Yes. Uh, how much, uh, how, how long do you spend that? <laughs> how many times have you done that, actually? You should know, James. You live with her. You live with her, so you should know. You should know. How often you? I've given up. <laughs> yeah, you should. Okay, we can try. Spoon? 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 Sp
give it a taste. Okay, so this is kind of a Anna special. So sometimes, especially when your ingredients are not really cold, what I like to do is um, add some ice cubes to it. So it kind of cools it down instantly, but it also makes it really, I don't know, gives it kind of a nice texture and also waters it down if it's a little bit too thin thick. Thin it out of it. Mm -hmm. How's it tasting, Jeff? Great. Great. Should we put some ice cubes in? Yeah, maybe a couple. Okay. This is a, kind of a weird thing. You won't see other places probably, but it's one of my little kitchen hacks that I, I find that I like quite a bit. So let's... Um, so along with ice cubes, I have a question. Yes. Because gazpacho is so refreshing and cold and wonderful, but is there a certain kind of alcoholic drink that's good to have when you're Coming having gazpacho on a hot afternoon? <laughs> so um, it's kind of awkward to pour out of something this size. So what I like to do, um, what I like to do is pour it into like a measuring cup. I love this this type of a measuring cup because it has um, this nice little lip on it, so it's easier to pour than um, if you're pouring just straight out of here. Um, it's it's going to be a lot di more difficult to do that. Um, you'll notice kind of the color of it is more of an orange. That's because the tomatoes that we're using and the vegetables that we're using in this are lighter in color. So. Oops, just give it a little spritz there. And just set that one aside. And I would do this. Hmm, I would do this one of two ways. So one way that I like to do this is kind of as an appetizer. And so, use this one here. So I would just kind of pour a little bit into a little cup here. And then you have a really nice little shooter. And you could even use, um, if you felt so inclined, you like do like a little grilled cheese or something with it for a summer tomato soup and grilled cheese. So that's one way that I would do it. And again, you can finish it with a little bit of olive oil if you want to have a little sippy cup. And um, the other thing that I do with it quite often, if you would like it to be a little bit more formal, so if you're doing kind of a, a nicer dinner, um, you can pour this um, through your sieve, right? And then you're gonna take out all the chunks. So any of the skins that are there, um, it's a little bit more rustic and more authentic Spanish style to just do it kind of rough. But if you want to, you can send it through something like this and then serve it maybe like in a flat bowl. And that way you're gonna have more of an elegant presentation. If you really wanna get fancy, you can do um, little ribbons with your cucumber to serve with it. So all you do is take your peeler and just kind of run it along the edge like this way. And then you can get these like really easy to work with little cucumber bits and do kind of a little cucumber curly on the top if you want to. There you go. Croutons, you know, anything you feel like. They all work. And what else can we do with such tomato bliss? Bloody Marys, Bloody Marys. <laughs> yeah, you want to give it a shot? Oh, sure, yeah, put it up front. Okay, so now what we're going to do... So gazpacho is also a fantastic base for a Bloody Mary, and um, so that's probably... You know, the thing is that... Oh, let me put this back here really quick. You can see, I'm going to pull it up here. So all of these things that we're gonna make are gonna have really delicious juice that sits at the bottom. And what you're gonna probably be inclined to do at home is like throw that away when you get to the bottom of your, of your, um, your dish. You're gonna think like, well, what are we gonna do with all this juice that's accumulated here at the bottom? If I tip it to the side, you can see there's quite a puddle that's down there now. And when you get to the bottom of the bowl, probably just rinse it out and throw it away. Keep it and make Bloody Marys. Because <laughs> all of these things, you can see with our little tomatoes from the bruschetta, there's quite a bit of juice that's accumulated down there. And then also um, your um, gazpacho is very similar to a base for, um, that you would use. So it would work just as well. And the longer these sit, the more juice we're gonna get, right? Yes, exactly. So if we wanted to, should we, should we make some drinks? Yep. Okay. So let's, um, that was a rhetorical question. 
Okay, so I would do, um, literally what I would do is probably strain a little bit of this, so I'll show you how to do this, um, and just kind of uh, dump a little bit of your soup into here, because probably don't want it real chunky if you're going to be drinking it. <laughs> if you have a soup spoon, then that's one thing. But it's pretty easy, and you can see immediately all the juice that comes out of here. And all you do is just kind of play with it with your spoon. You have a kind of, um, you don't need a real fine mesh because uh, it's not going to be the end of the world if you have some going through on there. But this tomato juice is going to be really, really delicious. In fact, um, yeah, that's dump nice. that in there. Yeah, why not? Just, yeah, just dump yeah. it in. Sure, why not? Because then all we're doing is adding tomato, basil, a little olive oil. It's not gonna hurt anybody. And um, so that basically does the trick. So we got some ice cubes back there. And um, so we'll do like a couple ice cubes in each one. So you can even go even finer with this, but see how I keep pushing on it? And now I can actually like, it kind of holds its form now. So you can tell that a lot of the juice is coming out and I'm, what I'm really left with is most of the seeds and the skins. So um, if you want like a pure tomato juice water, this is the way to do that. So that'll do pretty well for now. And we'll set this one aside. So let's put some, some vodka in the glasses. <laughs> And we can do. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, little kids aren't supposed so to say good. vodka. Vodka better than tequila with the tomatoes. If you like tequila, tequila is wonderful as well. You can do. Um, some people do it with beer. Gin would be kind of an interesting addition. Some people do. <laughs> they they call it a bloody disaster, but some people do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I probably do like a shot or two of um, your juice here, and then we're gonna do a little bit of our tomato juice in here. And oops, I didn't I didn't divvy that up as good. You'll get the you'll get the grown up version. Anna, and then um, yes. How far in advance can you make the salad pasta salad? I do that. Um, it's just gonna get better. It's delicious the next day, but for sure. Yeah, absolutely. But for sure, you could do it four hours ahead. It's just gonna, it's just gonna hang out. Does that it's go just for gonna the get gazpacho better. and salsa as well? I think so. Yeah, the gazpacho especially is a really great one to do if you're kind of at home and you have um, guests coming with Shelly. Would you, if you can make that four hours in advance or earlier in the day, would you serve it cold, or would you? Would you I serve it? at home. A uh, cold. Cold at home. <laughs> See why I need a Bloody Mary? Uh, cold at home. And so I would just probably make it and put it in the um, refrigerator and then pour it into my nicer bowl when I'm ready. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So let's grab, um, let's see, I like to do a little splash of like tapatio or a hot sauce in here. And we're, um, slap your mama. <laughs> this is, this is a Thomas special. My dear friend Thomas, who is from Louisiana, introduced me to this. It's this crazy hot, wonderful, delicious seasoning. And so usually when I do it at home, I dip the rim in it. Then you have this like really hot, spicy. Um, it has maybe some like onion and onion, cayenne, cayenne, black pepper. Black pepper. Celery, probably like a little bit like a spicy celery salt would be kind of what it is. Yeah, so I usually would put this on the rim at home. Slap your mama. <laughs> <laughs> Not my mother, I love you dearly. Where, where do you get it around here? You can get it, I think you can get it kind of at Whole Foods, but you can also get it somewhere like um, World Market. I always see it there. Is that where you get it? Yeah, World Market. This, this one I got from, from Louisiana, from Thomas. <laughs> um, sometimes even I'll put a little bit of clam juice in here too, if you want to, or like clamata if you have, whoops, this way? Yeah. Or if you have like a little bit of clam juice or clamata, gives it kind of a neat flavor. Um, certainly it's not necessary. I do the horseradish sometimes. Um, you know who used to make the best ones is Nancy. She makes the best ones. And Levenberg, uh-huh. And she always puts in the, um, 
um, she puts a little bit of sour cream and mixes it in. So it's, it's like a whole Sounds breakfast, great. you know. Maybe one version and come be your taster in the middle. Here. Who wants to taste? Come on up, June. My lucky winner. I didn't taste it yet, though. All right, Lydia. Sounds so good. Okay, here, give it a try. Tell me what you think. Oh my God, it's absolutely <laughs> lovely. Yeah, cool. it's nice with the. I love it with you the fresh vegetables. The whole thing. Yeah, mm. A little yeah. bit, yep. Mm -hmm. But we would make it for you without. <laughs> yeah. um, it's easy to make it without. Well, um, and then it also would make a really beautiful soup. So there you have it. And we're gonna do. Um, okay, let's finish this, and then we're we're done for the day. Okay, so now that we've had this sitting for a while. Have some. Uh, I'm gonna have to try. This. Have a have a beverage while you wait. Hmm? <laughs> um, okay, so I like to kind of um, push this in here to um, my serving bowl from kind of the top over, and I try to kind of get the tomatoes on top so mm. it looks pretty. And ooh, wow. oh, thank you. I'm gonna have to have you come more often. And you can just kind of move it around till you get it where you want it. You know, put some something fresh on top. Usually when I'm um, kind of right towards the end. Yes, baby. Feta? Oh, feta, yeah, I know. Huh? I didn't forget, I promise. Um, let's do like a couple, maybe a couple new pieces of um, fresh basil just to finish okay. on the top. Yeah, we'll do like a couple little tomatoes just to kind of add a little color on top. You want a lot of them at the bottom, but kind of mix it around here. Cut. Um, yeah, or just find some little pieces and we'll just kind of put them around to decorate. Like um, like these little, the little kind of the small flowers like at the tops, yep. And then um, we can just sort of. So you use the flowers? I like the flowers or just the, the kind of tender young basil leaves. And then I would just kind of put some on top just cause they look pretty and kind of leave them on there. That's perfect. And then we'll add this uh, feta on top. So this one again is a Israeli feta. I love French feta. I'm Greek, but um, it's hard to find really good um, Greek feta. What and you'll the, see if I tip this over. Oh, what, sorry. What are the differences between? Oh, that's good. These, uh, perfect. Israeli versus. Greek. <coughs> so oh. flip them over like this yeah. way too, because then you get the prettier side. Um, right here. Ooh, Just move it this one. Yeah. Which way? Yeah. This way. Yeah. Just get it out of this. Oh, out of the frame. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Put that back there. Okay, so now we have um, some basil here and we'll put the feta on top. So you can see, uh, maybe you can see in here, there's like a whole bunch of water at the bottom of here. So if you wanted to, you can pour some of the water on here. It's like a um, salty brine, so it'll just give it kind of interesting flavor. I'm scared to set it down because it'll fall over. And then I just serve some with um, with the feta on the top. So it's pretty simple to do. And um, I usually serve more so, more feta on the side because I like some in every single bite. <laughs> um, and it, also if you get a really good feta with a brine, uh, don't buy it that's already pre-crumbled, it's totally dried out and doesn't have good flavor. Try to find it with the brine. And you can also put it in a Tupperware and pour your brine over the top. If it doesn't quite cover it, you can put a little bit of salt water on top of it. And that'll keep it for months and months. It'll last really, really well. So if you just wrap it up, it's going to go bad probably within a week or two. And that way it'll last you much longer. So there you have it. There's five new things to do with tomatoes. <laughs> here um, please join us next month and uh, you can follow us on Twitter uh, back, backslash Twitter at backyard underscore brunch Facebook is Facebook backslash B brunch and also please follow tweet hope to see you next month Yay.